This guy on the left is the biggest anime sesibaka you will ever see. He gets a cripple friend with double twin dragons so large it should be illegal. Even in real life, every girl instantly gets attracted to him because he plays Roblox, but anyways, here's a secret. All his life, he was only interested in one celebrity from a K-pop group called We Hate Weebs. Unfortunately for him, he finds out that his lifelong crush just happens to be his girlfriend's mom. Anyways, it's a long story, so buckle up and let's start from the beginning. As such, bro starts going crazy as he knows he's doomed for life, and instead of vigorously studying for his upcoming exam, he could only think of some milk jugs in front of him. Suddenly, the boy snaps out of his staring at some double chicken breasts from the meat section trance by smashing his economics textbook close. And just as I thought things were about to get better for our boy, the sussy turned tables turn as bro reaches for his tissues at the corner of his desk. He then pipes up and continues to hype himself up by claiming that it's time for his personal version of the rumbling, as he's about to call on his attack titan down below. After opening his laptop from where he last left off online, he proceeds to quickly equip his favorite pair of earbuds that he only uses when it's time to erupt a volcano. Regardless, he hops on a Discord server where he tells his unsuspecting friends to let him cook, so the call goes silent as everyone knew Bro was getting ready to browse his go to genre that can allow him to channel his one pump powers. And right before Rocket lift off, the sussy Baka decides to quickly look around his room as he doesn't want to get ganked while rooted to his chair as he can't hear anything. Bro then continues with the unsuspected playbook as he downloads a fan cam of some K-pop idol, allowing him to enter the back of Old Town Road brought to him by my boy Lil Nas. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, his attack helicopter goes crazy whenever he watches the former K-pop idol named Jang Minyoung. And here's the cherry on top, the idol retired over a decade ago. Nevertheless, our boy continues to go crazy watching some 460p videos as he's that down bad, but at least we can let him cook. So fast forward like 30 seconds, almost as long as a full YouTube short, bro finally finishes and you know what, Minyoung do be showing off some personalities. Nonetheless, after passing out from the sheer force of the protein nation rushing out of his banana tree, he wakes up the next day having to hurry to the examination hall. Somehow though, he's able to actually complete the exam with the help of activating his Asian genes, but on the other hand, he fails to complete his assignment on time. As such, bro sighs as he knows he's going to be in a rude awakening once his Asian parents find out, so he prepares for the worse. Luckily for him though, his meditation gets interrupted by a bunch of girls trying to get his attention and one of them is packing in more ways than one. However, as they eagerly gank our boy, they finally learn that this mega sussy baka is named Sumjun. Regardless, Sumjun now finds himself in a very sticky situation as one of the girls with whale-like personalities latches onto him harder than a bottom frag sage sticking onto their top frag duelist. And next thing we know, her eyes disappear signaling a very troublesome near future as every time this happens in anime, things quickly ramp up. So within mere seconds, Sumjun gets surrounded by more girls, all latching onto him whilst also directing him to an unknown destination. It then turns out that the reason why the girls are being so pushy is because all three of them want to take him out for drinks. Now fast forward to the night, the girls have succeeded in their mission to take Sumjun out for the evening as they know he's headed towards academic probation land. Meanwhile, this girl right here, busy making a mess out of herself on purpose, has almost been kicked out of the academy twice, so she knows the feeling. Nevertheless, she keeps missing most of her shots as they keep landing in between her forbidden double hoppers, as she's already hit her limit for the night, but at least we get to learn that her name is Ju Jae. As such, the other girls order her to stop drinking as it looks like she's ready to tap into the sussy underworld, but of course she gets angry and claims that she's perfectly fine. Seconds later, the sussy fire nation taps into Junji's soul, causing her to make a move on our boy, but he tries his best to ignore everything as he doesn't want anything to stand in his way of gaming all night long. And with Sumjin successfully avoiding her jungle gank to the best of his abilities, he ends up getting saved as the other two girls decide to play a game like Truth or Dare. During this game, we find out that this bongshell somehow has the tendencies of a nun, but she has the body of an Instagram girl that puts fitness freak or gym girl in their bio. An emotionally filled Junji then rushes away from the table as she thinks her friends are busy picking on her. But in reality, her friends were too busy shoving unlimited food in their faces as their Korean food slaps. No one then moves to follow her, so her two girlfriends continue eating at the table while they order Sumjin to follow her like a true wing woman. Initially, Bro did not want to go after her as he can't be bothered being late for his upcoming raid on Destiny, but the girls guilt trip him by telling him he's the only one that can apparently make her feel better. As such, the girls continue happily eating as Bro can't get the hint, but he at least decides to go help her out, getting him kicked out of his raid group. Eventually, Sungjin finds the Cinderella where he cheers her up by revealing the fact that he's never had any action in his life, 
and I don't doubt him as bro looks like the only action he's got is through VR. So after Junji learns that Sungjin has never kissed a girl in his entire life either, she starts staring at our boy exactly like when you silently let one fart rip beside someone, and they begin to stare at you knowing you were the culprit. Eventually, she breaks the deafening silence by taking the initiative to gank his lips with him totally unaware of the outcome, but luckily for our boy, one of his long-lasting dreams have finally come true. Sungjin then freaks out as he realizes she didn't just go for a peck, instead she kept on going like a French girl wanting a piece of his hidden in-and-out animal-style fries. After Junji pulls away looking like a waterfall invaded her personal space, our boy gets paranoid, but his suspicions were correct as he ends up noticing her two friends watching from a corner. Now caught in the act of leveling up his romantic life for the first time ever, her friends dip faster than my friends had tapping me on escape from Tarkov, leaving behind a fast asleep Junji in Sungjin's care. And so our boy, like a true gentleman, takes upon the mantle of responsibility to take her home safely as he can't just leave her behind in a random alley. Upon arriving outside her apartment, Sungjin ends up taking a picture of the door to send to their group chat to make sure he's in the right place, but her friends tease him for not taking her to a motel instead. So with her friends being totally useless in this situation for refusing to help him out, he decides to just ding-dong the doorbell hoping for the best. And so the door swings open a second later, where our boy gets caught by utter surprise as it turns out, Junji's great genes came straight from her mother. Sungjin is then forced to stare at her as he can't look away, unable to fathom how attractive older Junji is, especially due to the fact that she got hips that don't lie paired with giant vanilla milkshakes. Unfortunately for our boy, he accidentally says out loud what he was thinking, causing him to catch himself real quick where he attempts his best to escape his predicament only for him to continue fumbling the bag. Regardless, he decides to apologize as he kept stumbling on his words, where he decides to just accept his fate, only for things to turn out far worse as his banana tree entered the chaos by trying to escape his genes. But since she's an angelic lady, she ends up thinking Bro is having a cramp, so she heads knee level and tries to help him out by reaching towards the targeted area. So with his impending banana tree begging to escape his genes, and with the older Junji reaching towards the base of the plantation, Sungjin quickly drops Junji in an attempt to avoid being exposed. So now with Junji falling flat to the ground, our boy makes a maid dash to the exit of the apartment due to his banana sword almost successfully making an appearance. So bro just apologizes and dips. But of course, just as he was able to fully exit the apartment complex, Sungjin trips on his shoelace while going down the stairs, causing him to miss an entire flight of stairs and to eat dirt. Meanwhile, back inside Junji's place, her mom is so thankful to Sungjin for bringing her home safely, where she also gets flustered at the fact that Sungjin called her pretty despite her age. Anyways, let's fast forward to later on the night when Sungjin finally makes it home, so he jumps straight to bed after tending to his knee. He's then unable to sleep as Bro kept tussling and rolling around in his bed, due to him being unable to remove the thought of the great pillows he got to stare at all thanks to Junji's mom. But then, just as he kept trying to fight off his sussy thoughts, Sungjin misses the audio cue of his door slowly opening with a mysterious figure hiding behind it. It then turns out that the mysterious figure is actually Junji's mom, where she looks like she's ready for a sussy time, due to her pretty much wearing an invisible dress, all thanks to the special fabric. She then makes her way beside Sungjin, who's still mumbling in his sleep about how soft and amazing her water balloons looked like, so she whispers and asks if he wants a turn. Of course, Bro instantly accepts the offer claiming that there's no man on earth that would be able to resist those powers, but little does he know, he's getting ganked by the sussy nation. She then presses the double vanilla milkshake behind Sungjin's back, causing him to get jolted awake as he thought it was all just a dream, but somehow the devil herself has appeared. She then claims that since our boy went through all the trouble to make sure Junji was safe and sound tonight, that it's time for her to pay back her dues for everything he did today. Initially, Bro hesitates and takes a big gulp as he thinks there's no way this is real, unless he never went home and passed out after hitting the deck. Eventually, our boy is unable to hold back his mighty banana shake powers as it activated the skill rock hard, allowing her to thank him profusely. But then, just as things were about to enter the territory of Sungjin being allowed to enter her front gates, she yells out loud that he can do whatever he wants as this is just a dream. Suddenly, Sungjin finds himself sent back to reality upon opening his eyes where he gets greeted by the sound of morning birds coupled with utter disappointment. He then springs awake from his bed, absolutely frustrated that everything was just a dream, but then something important finally dawned on him. To make sure his hypothesis was correct, he quickly removed his bed sheet covers to check on his attack titan, only to find a wet pool has surrounded the base of his titan. So now, for the first time ever in his life, Bro got invaded by the waterbenders in his dream in the form of a girl other than Minyoung. 
He is then astonished at the grand revelation of him being able to explode a volcano, when thinking of a girl other than the K-pop idol, as it has never happened before. Meanwhile back at school, Junji has a massive recurring headache due to her night out yesterday, but she's already busy complaining to her friends about how she can't remember anything about last night. But like true long-time childhood friends, the first thing they happily mention to Junji is how she finally became a woman yesterday. However, Junji still has no clue about what they are talking about, so one of the girls leans in to explain in great detail about how she became truly French with Sunjun. Now speak of the devil, Sunjun enters the classroom looking a little bit more distant than usual, but Junji's friends call him over. Upon him sitting down and with her friends leaving the room to give them space, Junji starts to get flustered as she tries to explain how she didn't mean to do it on purpose. However, right before she's able to finish explaining herself, Sungjin does the most chad thing he's ever done in his life by taking her hand and staring straight into Junji's eyes to ask if they could go out again tonight. And so she accepts even though she's feeling under the weather after last night, as she wants to know what the heck this boy really do be thinking. Now fast forward to later on in the afternoon after classes, Bro tries to rip one out again, but something's wrong, he can't activate rock hard while watching Minyoung. However, after trying everything to make sure his Jiu dude can evolve, he starts thinking about Junji's mom which accidentally riles up his colossal titan back to its lively self. Bro then sulks as he can't figure out what's so special about his friend's mom and why the heck his titan can only live up to its name when he watches a retired celebrity. Nevertheless, Bro has decided to do some extensive testing, and the only way he can do that is if he gets close with Junji to see her mom every day. Meanwhile, Junji is out with her girls grabbing some bingsu as she can't make up her mind about Sunjun. But the sussy turn tables turn again, as the girls begin to inform her that the only reason a boy would ask out a girl again is if they want to stick their spoon deep within their rice bowl. As such, Junji blushes and looks away as she shyly tells the girls she really doesn't know how to do that sussy stuff since she loves the Barbie movie. Regardless, the girls whisper to her and alert her that if Sumjin makes her drink tonight, then he's just trying to prep her before the spoon makes its way to her intended door as Bro just wants to charge through her like a rhino. She then pulls away upon hearing what happens when a rhino comes charging through, unable to believe that Sumjin would do such a thing, so she defends him even though Bro has something else in mind. So fast forward to the fateful evening where the two decide to go on their date, Junji starts pounding drinks after drinks like a sussy water fountain, with our boy's rhyme a charge in her mind, totally hoping that her friends were wrong about him. Meanwhile, Sumjin just watches on, hoping that Junji will hurry up and teleport into the fast asleep dimension, as he wants to figure out why he keeps Malphite ulting whenever he thinks of her mom. As such, Bro decides to get Junji two more large drinks to help pacify her normal self, as he can't wait to bring her home again, to go face to face with the bombshell of a beauty. Unfortunately for our boy though, it turns out that the last man standing after last night wasn't him at all, and it ends up being Junji as Bro phases into the passed out stage. Nevertheless, Bro opens his eyes hours later, where he's able to finally realize he's in a totally different room, and he didn't even remember heading to this unfamiliar place. Suddenly, Sungjin gets up with his head throbbing harder than mine when my teammates int on purpose dragging me down the rank ladder, but in the corner of his eyes, he realizes that Junji is just around the corner. He then notices that the bed he's on right now contains no tissues or weird white sticky residue, so there's no way it's his but somehow, the walls contain the same posters of Minya. Eventually, he comes to the realization that this is actually his room, but Junji was busy cleaning his room up while he was passed out. So Sungjin panics as he doesn't want anyone to know about his secret regarding his sussy obsession with Jan Minyoung. As such, Bro quickly gets up to stop her from seeing the rest of his room as he's absolutely embarrassed, so Sumjin summons a bear hug. Success, his maneuver works but Sumjin ends up accidentally squeezing the heck out of her bed onkadonks, whilst placing his Jiu dude right behind her dump truck. It was then at this very moment he knew he screwed up as the dump truck in front of him was too large, causing it to directly make intense friction with his Jiu dude as they were more plump than a freshly harvested plum. Meanwhile, as Sungjin is busy hoping that Junji has not unlocked his Minyam fantasies on Wattpad yet, Junji misunderstands his actions and starts thinking that he's trying to start his earthbending attacks. As such, she realizes that her friends were right about everything, thinking that Sungjin is just like every other boy wanting to rice cake smash the living out of her. However, she quickly remembers what one of her friends said, claiming that if Sungjin ever does the sussy Batman signal of rice cake smashing, then she can ignore it to stay friends or she can be the Robin to his Batman. Regardless, as Junji is faced with the hard decision of either activating the hardest rock skill of Sumjin, or walking away from this very friendly and totally normal embrace, she begins feeling the sussy sensations filling up from behind her. 
As such, Junji's legs give out as she can't control the sussy attack taking over her entire body, causing her to fall over head first towards the couch. At the same time, Sungjun squeezes more into his embrace as he doesn't want Junji to see his sussy stack of minyam, causing Junji's double hoppers to fully engulf his spaceship. At this point, Junji looks like she has been fully defeated by the sussy Earth Nation attack, as it feels and looks like her armor papayas are straight up gang rail gunned by Sungjun's protected banana tree. Now to be clear, everything is still a very big misunderstanding, as Sungjun is trying his best to protect his secrets, so he ends up asking Junji to move to the bed. As such, she refuses his request causing our boy to sweat bullets as he doesn't want the world to know his secret. Whilst Junji is busy thinking, Sungjin is really trying his hardest to get her to agree to some rice cake destroying. Suddenly, the sussy turn tables turn when Junji tries to wiggle her way out of his spell, causing her fresh baked buns to awaken the bulge of our boy's Titanic. Now with his sword fully discovered, Bro panics even more as he can't let her go, and at the same time, he can't do anything as the statue is now fully erect like Mount Rushmore. Suddenly, just as our boy thought it was all over for him now, he hears Junji make a very weird sound while her armored legs quickly trembled for a few moments as if an earthquake has hit her core. Mere seconds after the earthquake took a toll on Junji's body, she turns around and stares straight into our boy's soul, where she ends up mumbling to him about how she's finally done thinking about it. Elsewhere, Junji's two friends take a midnight stroll after grabbing some ice cream, for the two wonder what's happening to their best friend right now, but both end up deciding not to text her tonight, as she's probably having a good time. Technically, these two aren't wrong, at the same time, Sungjin better thank them, or else Junji would have never thought he wanted to do some rice cake destroying as she was previously more innocent than a nun. Nonetheless, the two friends end up making a bet on whether or not Junji would devour an entire vanilla ice cream tonight, or would she run away and head straight home. Now fast forward back to the action, it's revealed that Sungjin has finally let go of his bear hug as he's busy sitting down on his bed, whilst totally looking confused at Junji who prefers to be on the ground. Our boy then tries his best to convince her to sit down, as it's totally uncomfortable to be on your knees when the floor is wood, but Junji starts talking about how she thinks it'll be better if she's down there. As such, Bro sits back down as he knows you can't convince someone that has already made up their mind, but then Junji starts telling him to not get mad as it's her first time. Now totally confused to what Junji is talking about, our boy finds out seconds later what she truly meant as she starts ripping open the gates to his red rock, looking like she's about ready to drink her first ever 7-Eleven Slurpees. Bro is then elated when she unlocks and frees his spicy Nashville hot chicken, unsure of what to do, but he's also astonished at how he could activate rock hard without thinking of Minyoung. Regardless, Sungjin lets everything play out while trying to act like he totally wants Junji to not go through with her actions, so in the end she swallows the entire plus-sized meal whole. Coincidentally, Sungjin is busy wondering how his Malphite is actually up and running as this never happens, so he ends up having his largest Malphite ult straight into the Dragon Pit. After pulling off his best ever Elder Dragon Steel, our boy decides it's time for him to repay the favor as he can't just let Junji do everything. So he takes upon the mantle of responsibility to make sure Junji experiences her first ever Spider-Man attack into her gates. Sungjin then embodies the perfect double Spider-Man finger invasion into Junji, but things quickly ramp up as Bro can't handle the real-life immersion compared to his dating sim games, so he ends up calling his attack helicopter into action. However, disaster strikes right before his helicopter got squeezed straight into the narrow gates in front of him, as her phone starts blaring loud music as someone is calling her. As such, Bro fumbles the bag as he should have quickly sent her phone into silent or continued going, but he stops and decides to just stare at her phone causing Junji to get up and stop his advance to answer the call. Our boy then face palms hard as he can't believe the timing, so he starts blaming himself as this was the prime opportunity he never knew he had. To make matters worse for both of them, it turns out that it's Junji's mom calling and there's an emergency back home, so she needs to leave as soon as possible. As such, she ends the conversation and turns to our boy where she sadly informs Sungjun that she needs to head home right now, but she apologizes for having to abruptly disconnect from their gaming session. But you know what guys, he's still a gentleman so he offers to walk her home but she straight up ignores him, causing our boy to feel totally useless and defeated as nice guys do finish last. However, right before Junji left his room to head back home, she takes a moment to point out Junji's calendar and claims that she has one too, where she also asked him if he would like to have it. Initially, he had no clue what the heck she was pointing to, but then it dawned on him that the calendar is actually Minyoung's calendar so bro freaks out about her seeing his secret. Sungjin then springs into action as he gets up from his bed, looking like he's having a sweating contest with that sweaty always trying to play the meta, 
as he tries to explain himself. Luckily for him though, Junji orders him to not get embarrassed, and she reveals the fact that she's actually super happy that he's a fan. So as she exits the premises, she orders him to come over tomorrow as she will have an extra calendar for him. Shortly after, our boy finds himself unable to move, busy wondering why would she even have posters of Minyo, as those calendars and posters are special editions you can't even buy anymore. Regardless, fast forward to the next day, we find Sunjun arriving at the doorsteps to Junji's apartment totally drenched by the rain, as there was a random typhoon passing by, but we all know this is some great foreshadowing. Upon hearing the door slowly creak open, Sungjin ends up quickly apologizing whilst whipping a gift of sweets in front of him, thinking that the first person to open the door would be her mom. However, you can see the massive disappointment strewn on his face when he realizes that it's Juji that answered the door. Now I can't believe this dude would still be hung up on her mom when he was just literally busy wanting to destroy her double Big Mac the night before. Nonetheless, Junji reveals to him that her mom would for sure love his gift, but she will give it to her later as she's not coming home anytime soon and the only one home right now is just Junji herself causing our boy to get utterly disappointed again. Clearly, bro has not pieced things together yet even though Junji asked him last night to come over and now she's telling him that she's home alone, so it looks like Junji is taking the matters into her own hands. Upon entering the house, she quickly takes his hand and rushes him over to her room where she quickly closes the door behind her, but this time, she instantly begins the sussy actions by removing his full-on armor. Of course, she starts off with the shirt, which Sumjin happily obliges too, but then she stares glaring at him, looking like she's about to steal his soul due to our boy refusing to give him her pants, to which he ends up giving up shortly after. And so everything comes off, whereby Junji makes the excuse that they need to do this, so bro doesn't get sick from the rain, and especially the cold, so she shoves it all into the laundry. Mere moments later, she sits back down on her bed beside him as the turntables turn, but this time, she flinches and starts blushing profusely when our boy begins to lean in closer. Junji then slowly closes her eyes, looking like your typical romantic anime scene is about to occur, so our bro closes the gap between them with one fell swoop. Sorry Junji, it was just all a prank bro as Sumjin fakes her out with a double pump just so he could go ahead and take a look at the cabinet behind her. He then happily reaches for the family photo book, but we all know Sungjin clearly did her dirty with the 360 no scope past her. Anyways, with her hopes and dreams now dashed, she's left speechless, but she looks like she's dead inside after Sungjin didn't even go for the peck. Regardless, Junji ends up going along with everything acting like he was totally going for the photo album the entire time, so the two end up reminiscing about the past on the bed. To make matters worse for her, our boy transforms into the ultimate sussy Becca after seeing a baddie off in the distance in one of the pictures so he quickly asks who the heck the girl was. But before she could answer, bro starts yapping to himself about how that person has some killer fresh glazed buns only to find out that it's her mom. Luckily for him though, Junji only heard the killer part so she asks what he meant by that, so Sumjun quickly tries to play it off as him talking about how the beach and the picture is such an amazing combo. Bro then lets out a sigh of relief once the coast was clear, as he didn't want Junji to think he was an apprentice of the pervy sage. Nevertheless, Sumjin finds himself in an awkward position where he accidentally uses up some charisma, god powers to get Junji to do a try on haul with some swimsuits from the past. He didn't even mean to, but somehow it works so he doesn't mind at all as he's probably going to imprint the images straight into his brain cells for tonight. Eventually, after trying out a bunch of swimsuits for an anime beach episode, Yuji decides to come out with one of her older school outfits from back in the day, but it looks like they could barely contain her massive twin peaks. It was at this very moment Bro Newbie screwed up, since his banana tree instantly popped out of nowhere trying his best to poke through a hole. Anyways, his inner self ends up losing the battle between the good and evil, where the evil thoughts became victorious as he's still a sussy bacon inside. As such, Bro got up like a zombie and proceeded to make headway towards Junji, who's busy wondering why bro isn't saying anything and why he's staring into her soul. Mere seconds later, Sumjin totally lost it, so the crazy man actually went straight for her anime cave extract, shocking Junji to her core, but she doesn't stop the advance at all. Bro then began eating some vanilla ice cream from the cave extract, causing Junji to tremble so hard as if a Japanese earthquake hit one of her buildings. Soon enough, Junji almost collapsed to the floor as if she got hit by a rogue back attack, so the two stop as they want to change up the scenery. However, Sumjin has evolved into an Omega Chad now, so he ends up sweeping Junji off her feet while leading the way to the nearest bed. And so the rest was history as Bro whipped out his Subway toasted foot long since Junji ordered unlimited ranch dressing to fill up her buns as it's the first time she got rotisserie chicken in there. Regardless, these guys went so hard at some rice cake smashing that Junji's eyes turned into heart ones, 
So that's when you culture people know things when over 100% heat. Suddenly, a flashback occurs in the middle of round one of their one versus one duel. Back to the time when Sunjun could only think about K-pop and Demon Slayer as he watched it over and over. Although every dude from the block as far as you can see would instantly fall head over heels from Junji, he was the only one that didn't really care as he only wanted to grind Valorant. On the other hand, girls like Junji would always pester him to hang out, but since they were childhood friends he had to agree even if he just unlocked his dough fruit in time for the next C. Anyways, Junji would always buy things for him like food every time they went out, and he never really thought much about it until now. Now he's become every dude's number one enemy as he bagged the number one prize on the block even though he never even went for her in the first place. Back to the present, and with his memories all rushing him at once, he's finally glad he was able to take the hint just once as he's able to stick his chili hot dog deep within the bakery. In the end, the two finished their one versus one duel with both Sungjun and Junji reaching the climax of the mountain at the same time. However, disaster strikes due to Sungjun instantaneously passing out once his extra protein vanilla shake was created, causing Junji to be worried about him. With Sungjun passing out from the sheer force of A squared plus B squared, their situation gets even more sticky as Minyoung has arrived back home earlier than usual due to her needing an umbrella after a surprise amount of rain. Upon walking in, Minyoung gets a bit disappointed that Junji's friend seemingly already left the house as this was the first time she's ever brought anyone home. She can hurry to drop her bags of grocery, as Minyoung was so excited to see who this friend was as she could not get even more happier for her daughter. At the same time, we discover that Sumjin finally woke up from his sage-like clarity after exploding a volcano, but the two seem like they are in love as they both each see butterflies out of nowhere. Even our boy finds himself super ecstatic, as he never thought the day would come when he would create protein shakes without the need of using K-pop fan cam videos. Regardless, the two hub it out even though the two of them are still dripping a lot of sticky vanilla milkshakes from their ordeal before, so you guys know things are getting serious. Shortly after, the sage-like clarity causes Sumjin to become a menace, as he happily decides to leave while making it seem like he just used Junji as a rocket booster engineer for today so he waves goodbye. Anyways, with him still seeing butterflies and still super stoked, he can now explode his rocket without being a simp for Minyoung. He opens the door to the living room. However, his teen rocket instantly gets ready for the second blast off as he accidentally walks into Minyoung stuck changing like those videos where your step someone is stuck inside the laundry and they need help to get out. The sussy turntables turn even more when Minyoung hears the door swing open. So she tells him to come help her remove everything as she thinks she's talking to Junji, unaware that Sumjin is still here. As such, Pro Freeze is harder than the Harlem Shake Challenge, unsure of what to do but gets absolutely shocked that he hit the jackpot of seeing the real deal. Yet Bro is a fake fan since he still hasn't figured it out. At the same time, Junji finally realizes what the heck is going on so she almost breaks down and passes out like it's her turn now to go T-posing as this is the worst case scenario. But for some reason, Mingyoung is still stuck trying to take off her armor for the past 5 minutes, so with the plot armor thickening, Junji races to find Sumjun's clothes, but they are nowhere to be seen. Eventually, she gives up looking for them, so she looks for Sumjun to try and hide him, only to find him busy staring at her mom whilst his Mount Rushmore was out in full force. Bro then takes a moment to take it all in as he's downloading everything to his sussy bank, only to find it a bit weird that her meal proportions seem eerily familiar to his favorite K-pop star. In the end, Sumjun gets saved by the bell, all thanks to Junji snapping him back to reality and out of his sussy baka trance since he was literally midway to grabbing the twin pyramids of Giza in front of him. Regardless to no one's surprise, Minyoung was able to finally take off the top when Junji was able to close her door, telling her mom that she will be out in like one minute. With Sungjin still dazed, Junji pulls off a big brain move by slightly opening her door to tell her mom she's going to grab her clothes from the laundry, successfully buying the two some time. She then tiptoes her way out of her room whilst hiding a frozen Sungjin behind her door. So this gives her an ample amount of time to grab his clothes from the dryer. Luckily for the two lovebirds, Minyoung decides to go clean up in the bathroom, so this gives them even more time to sneak our boy out, but Bro currently has a raging horse he has to take care of. Fast forward 30 minutes later, Sumjun randomly ganks Minyoung as she's coming out after finishing a nice cold bath, so I have no idea what Bro is cooking up. Nevertheless, he introduces himself to Minyoung whilst covering his subway footlong as he can't help it due to him being face to face with the one and only former legendary K-pop star. But before he could finish saying his name, he gets shocked as she already knew his name and she even informs him that they have already met the other day, so now he's starting to piece things together. Nonetheless, with Minyoung now knowing who the friend was that her daughter brought over, she happily invites Sungjin to dinner, 
so this mega simp accepts without yet figuring out who the real Min Young is. As such, Sung Jun stays over for dinner only for him to find the entire thing way too awkward, due to the sussy Fire Nation implications to his left and in front of him. But as dinner continues on, he moves his chair closer to hide his banana tree due to his junior chicken currently being enlarged to its maximum size with Min Young around. Bro then starts stealing glances at Junji's mom like the true supreme sussy baka he is, so he ends up feeling a little bit of pity for himself, yet he continues glancing as he can't help himself but be curious as to why he's so attracted.